What's going on guys, Beastly Gamer here and welcome to the Beastly Gamer channel. Today I want to talk to you guys about some video game news and just ramble on a little bit. I'm trying to get back into the role of life. I've had a three day weekend, I haven't done anything with my time other than play awesome video games with my friends. And so now it's time to get back to work, time to make some more videos and keep you guys up to date what's going on in the video gaming world. Resident Evil Revelations 2, it was rumored. Uh, I talked about this last week I think. And now it has been confirmed. Capcom took the stage at the pre-Tokyo Game Show in Japan yesterday. And they did announce that Resident Evil Revelations 2 is going to be coming to the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, Xbox One, Xbox 360, and PC at an unscheduled date in 2015. Uh, this is good news and bad news for me. I bought my 3DS for Resident Evil Revelations. And I got to say that... I think that that game, I got my money's worth out of that game, period. I mean, it was an awesome experience. Revelations was later ported to PS3 and the Xbox 360, but on the 3DS it was an experience I never had on a, on a handheld before. It was really a console-worthy experience on a handheld, and it's kind of a bummer that uh, Revelations 2 won't be ported to the 3DS, and neither the Wii U won't be getting it either. So there's, there doesn't appear that any Nintendo versions of this game are going to be made. And it's kind of a downer for people who only play the Wii U or have a 3DS and want to, you know, enjoy more revelations on the go. But Capcom seems to be doing that a lot lately. The, uh, the Resident Evil remake that's coming out to next-gen consoles is not going to be coming to a Nintendo console, even though it was birthed on the Nintendo GameCube. So that kind of sucks, but I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully they go back to the original recipe and uh, are able to make Resident Evil what it used to be because it used to scare the shit out of people now it's more action and you know it's going in a different direction but hopefully they're able to fix it other gaming news playstation vita owners in japan are going to have access to 250 psp games for free just for having a playstation plus subscription and this <laughs> makes me pissed off to be an american because i really i really had a good time with my psp my playstation portable was a shit i bought it on release day and I thought I was the man playing those universal media discs. And now people get to download these games for free in Japan just for having PlayStation Plus. And uh, this article is on GameSpot.com. There will be a link in the description for all this news. PlayStation Plus subscribers in Japan will be granted free access to some 250 PSP games for the PlayStation Vita handheld, Sony has announced. The offer, which runs through September 17th until the end of the year, gives PS Plus subscribers unlimited access to an extensive library of digital PSP games such as Gran Turismo and Loco Roco. Currently, the PS Vita can access an entire library of PSP games within the PlayStation Store, each of which can be downloaded at a cost. The new PlayStation Plus offer means that many of these games can be downloaded for free and kept as long as the PlayStation Plus subscription, subscription lasts. That's a great deal. I mean, for real. <laughs> what can you say about that? That's an awesome deal. Uh, to be able to have 250 PSP games, of course you won't be able to down them, download them all at once, but you can download, delete, download, delete. And, and if you do get that option here in America and you guys want to keep all these games, just put them in your download list and delete them. And that way you can go right back in and uh, download any of these games in this list at any time. PlayStation Plus is awesome. It really is, man. Um, I think it's probably one of the best uh, values in the PlayStation ecosystem for sure. You get two free games for the Vita, PS3, and PS4 every month. Come on. That's 36, you know, 36 games. No. What is it? No, it's 72 games a year. Shit. That's a lot of stuff, man. And PlayStation Plus just keeps getting better and better. I hope to God that they somehow bring this over to America and give us this opportunity to have 250 free PSP games because that would be sick. Theme support. PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita are getting new updates and they're going to be able to do like dynamic themes, the things that uh, the PS3 is capable of doing. PlayStation's 2.0 update and Vita's 3.3 update to feature theme support, themes to be distributed via the PlayStation Store. Theme support is coming to the PlayStation 4 and Vita in the upcoming 2.0 and 3.3 firmware update Sony announced at this pre-Tokyo Game Show PlayStation press conference. This was yesterday. The long-awaited feature is demoed, was demoed during the conference with a theme featuring classic PlayStation mascots including Toro and the PlayStation Cat, who I do not care about. While Sony didn't detail exactly how much customization would be available to PlayStation 4 and Vita owners via themes, PlayStation EU Community Manager Chris Owens later confirmed via Twitter that PS4 themes would be distributed via the store. Obviously. Duh. Uh, this kind of news, hmm, I, I guess it's cool. Uh, it's kind of a, a better thing to be able to uh, 
to tweak your PS4 or your Vita to your own personal taste because right now they're all the same thing. I think they should, you know, you should be able to make pictures your background. I think you should be able to change the colors. The things, the little things the PS3 could do, the PS4 can't. And that's kind of silly. Uh, instead of doing stuff like this, they need to, you know, allow us to store videos and music on our consoles. That's a big deal to me. I like to put my pictures on there. I like to be able to go through galleries. I like to be able to listen to my MP3s. We don't have MP3 support on the PS4. We don't have YouTube on the PS4. They need to focus on things like that. I think that the themes are, are a pretty good way to go. It's a nice place to start. But I think that they can do better. Sony, they're listening to consumers. They're changing things. We need MP3 support. We need to be able to store our pictures and our videos on our consoles. We need YouTube. I mean, <laughs> damn it. I want YouTube on my PS4. I got it on my smart TV and my PS3 but I want it on the PS4 it shouldn't be that hard for them to be able to do that so I'll keep you guys posted with any any new updates and news from the PS4 UI you guys stay posted for that Bloodborne has been given a release date in Japan Bloodborne in Japan will be coming out on February 5th there has not been a release date for the US or the UK the release date um, announced during a Sony press conference in Japan on Monday suggests that the PS4 game could ship at a similar time across the US and the UK. However, Sony has yet to announce a Bloodborne release date outside of Japan. It's unclear whether um, <clears throat> whether work on localizing a game will impact its Western launch. So that might be the issue. They might have to localize it, they might have to change some things, and uh, that might be why we get it a little bit later than Japan. But the game looks great. Really excited to see what, what that's going to be all about. Uh, I like Dark Souls. Uh, I think that game was pretty fun, but to me it was a little slow. Now we get a version of the game is a lot faster and the last news I want to talk to you guys about is <laughs> Titanfall Titanfall the new update for Titanfall unlocks a Titan free skirmish mode this is what a lot of people were really excited about uh, Titanfall 6 major update 6 which includes a Titan free skirmish mode is due to go live on Wednesday so that's tomorrow updates for both the Xbox One and PC editions of the game will unlock an 8 versus 8 mode which removes both AI bots and Titans to create a more traditional first person shooter mode this is what everybody was excited about. This is what people wanted. Well, this is what people were depressed about. <laughs> and so now, this new skirmish mode should change things, and it should make Titanfall feel a little bit more like the traditional first-person shooter multiplayer. Call of Duty, Battlefield, it's just you versus other human beings. And I think that's fun. Uh, to do that, I think it's going to really change and maybe bring some new life into it. A lot of people have moved on from Titanfall. Me personally, never even got a chance to even try it. But I know a lot of people like Briar Rabbit and some of the other guys, Unreal Gamer, who loved this game when it first came out, but it became stale after a few weeks. This mode right here might actually breathe new life into it. So if you guys are into Titanfall and it's a game that you'd like to play, let me know what you think after this update hits on Wednesday. And last but not least, I want to tell you guys thank you all for supporting me with this channel. Thank you all for being my friends. I want to sing the, the theme song, The Golden Girls. Uh, this has been a, a very, very wonderful moment in my life doing this YouTube channel. i got a family of four and, and a wife, you know, four kids and a full-time job. I'm employed and I'm working hard. And I still make my YouTube videos and you guys are supporting me. I just want to let you all know how much that means to me. Thanks to all my old subscribers. Thanks so much to my new subscribers. You guys, be sure to check out the BC Gamer Facebook page. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitch. And share this channel and share these videos with everybody you can. I think this thing is going to be great, but it takes you guys, and it takes all of our participation to make it a wonderful, wonderful YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.